What's up, Divas and Divas? It's your girl, April. So I'm back with another new video. All right. And you know what? Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all bitches something. Y'all know it's Tuesday when I do these videos because I want to make sure that y'all get them on Wednesdays. And yes, a bitch is so pissed the fuck off right now. I was really happy. But did I just record like uh, 20 minutes of this motherfucking video and the volume was off on this goddamn microphone? Like, what? I don't even want to get into it with y'all about that. If it was a hair tutorial, I wouldn't even really give a fuck because I would just did a talk over. But you can't do no motherfucking talk over on a real talk. Like, who the fuck does that? Let me tell y'all something. I got a drink. If a bitch has some motherfucking weed, I would be smoking that shit on camera because I'm just that pissed. But anyway, we're going to bypass that because I'm happy to be back. And today is still going to be a good motherfucking day. It's Tuesday. By the time this goes up, it's Wednesday. And it's still going to be a good-ass day because, one, why? <sighs> it's all because of you guys. It's because of YouTube. It's because of you guys. Okay, so today is Tuesday. So let me tell y'all something. And I know I say that a lot. Oh, my God. I say that in my videos. If I got beef with you, I'm like, let me tell you something. Okay, I kind of like change it up. The words come out a little bit different. So if we got beef, I'd be like, let me tell you something. If we cool, I'd be like, let me tell y'all something. So let me tell y'all something. Okay, let me tell y'all something. It's Tuesday. And I'm super happy and excited. You guys have really made my day regardless of if you know that or not. So let's get into this. So it's Tuesday. I'm on my way out the door to... You know, mail off some packages to my wig wearers. To my wig wearers. Okay. And the doorbell fucking rings. I'm like, who the fuck is this? All right. So I open the door. Please tell me why the doorman is just, not the doorman, because the bitch ain't rich. Okay. But the FedEx man rings the doorbell and takes off like, you didn't even wait to see if a bitch was home. Like, you see the car in the driveway, you could have at least waited until a bitch was home. So whatever, he puts the package down. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool, whatever. Okay, so this was on my way to the post office. Okay, so, okay. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what the fuck is this? Now, mind you, I woke up, I was happy, I was in a good motherfucking mood, like always, I'm always in a good mood. But before I even get into all this, I want you guys to know something. Before you guys ask me, I hope you guys see, I do have a new comforter set, Pepe, cha-ching. No, not cha because it was really cheap. But for those of you guys who have been asking me on my YouTube videos, because I'm pretty sure you guys seen this in the last, latest videos, and for those of you who loved my last comfort set that was from Walmart, a girl needed to change it up a little bit. You know, I got tired of coming to Washington that one. I wanted something new. But I've never been the bright girl, meaning I don't really like bright colors. Well, I do, but I don't. Everything in my room was kind of dull and dark before that last comforter, before this one. So I thought it was time to spice it up a little bit more for you guys because I like it bright now. I like bright shit. I'm, I'm bright, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers used to call me light bright because I'm light skinned, whatever, but I'm bright. And I feel like when you have bright and cheery colors, your mood changes and makes you happy. And I want you guys to be on my channel and be motherfucking happy, okay? Regardless if a bitch is bitching or not, I want you to be motherfucking fucking happy okay so when I got a new comfort I didn't go nowhere I looked online so I got this one from Amazon right here now it's not a comfort set it's a duvet you know a duvet duvets are like fancy I think duvet duvet so it's a duvet and a duvet let me tell y'all something I didn't even know what a motherfucking I'm not really sure. I never knew what a duvet was. I thought a duvet was like some funky or a French type little throw cover that was really expensive. So my girl Shay told me that a duvet is practically a fucking pillowcase for your goddamn comforter. So I was like, oh, is that what it is? So it's a sheet with a zipper. You can put your motherfucking comforter in it. Oh, okay. But it's a little bit thicker than a sheet. I was like, oh, okay. I'm glad you told me that because I never knew what the fuck it was. Because it was a little bit pricey in some places. So, you know, I went all over. I went online and I couldn't find anything bright. But I seen this on Amazon. And I was in love with it. It was only $27. Now, it is a king size. My bed is a queen. But I like it to be a little bit bigger because I like it to hang on the floor. You know what I'm saying? So... This was $27 on Amazon.com, and I just bought it. And it only came with a duvet, and it does have my older comforter in it, which is gray, inside of it. And it just came with two pillow shams. So for $27 bucks for king size, it's really great. If you want a queen size, it's like 24 However, I will post that information in the box so that you, a, you girls know. And I'm also going to post another link where you can get $5 off if you purchase it the first time using your mobile app. 
five dollars off is a lot i don't get any money for it i just get like a credit like i can like a coin or some some shit like that it's i'm i'm not promoting the seller i found this on my own so it has nothing to do with the seller but in case you guys are wondering now also when i first seen this online i liked it but then i was like oh it kind of looks dark now these little like burgundyish brownish things right here they they do look darker online the greenish bluish teal looks a little darker online and I was okay with that, but when I got it in person, it's brighter. So keep that in mind that what you see on the computer, think of it as a little bit brighter because it is much more brighter. And that is one thing that I appreciate about it. For $27, you cannot beat that. Now, there was one that I was going to get for $100, but my girl Shay and my bestie said, no, I like this one. I'm sorry, but I'm not about to pay $100 for nobody's motherfucking duvet. I don't need a pillowcase for my goddamn comforter. For $100, I'm going to need a fitted and a top sheet four pillowcases, a bed skirt, and a comforter, and maybe even a decorative pillow for a hundred bucks. So I left that one alone, kind of resembled the last one that was on my bed anyway, which was a comforter, and I got this one right here for $27. For 27 bucks, you can't beat that. So in case you guys are wondering, I'm going to post it below, and if I so happen to forget, because you know a bitch be forgetting, then please just put a message, April, bitch, could you put the fucking link? That's all I'm talking about. Okay? So yes, yeah, so let's get into the whole ordeal of the post office. So as I was leaving out to go to the post office, my little grandson, he didn't want me to leave without him. You know, he was here with his mother, but he wanted to go along as well, and I was like, okay, get your shoes on and, and your pants so we can go. He argued me down because he wanted to put on socks. And I basically told him, you don't have to put on socks, okay? You don't need no socks on. He got in the truck, and he was good, okay? So anyway, as the FedEx guy left the package, I'm looking at the box. I'm like, is this from, like, um, Model Model or Sensational? Because I'm not really sure where this is coming from. I get a lot of packages, and I'm thinking, like, this is hair. But then it's a little bit heavy to be hair. So I'm looking at the package and the return address, and it says, Shh. Some like Schumach or some shit like that, YouTube. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this? Then I started getting hot and excited. And I was like, oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So, yes, you guys, I got a surprise. Bam. Okay. Do you see the shit? I'm like so motherfucking excited about this whole thing. When I was opening up the box, my kids were recording at the same time I was opening it. So I was like really excited on camera. And I was just smiling. Y'all already know how I feel about my fucking teeth. So I felt kind of, the videos, okay, I could just deal with it. But I'm really very insecure about my teeth in the front. But anyway, I was so excited. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I was just like overexcited. But it's my... YouTube play button, okay, for 100,000 subscribers. So let me tell y'all something, okay, and I really need to stop saying that all the time. But I want to thank you guys, all of you guys for this, um, because this is like ours. This is ours. Because for real, like, I'm like seriously overwhelmed right now, and I'm so happy. This is not even the end of my happiness today, but I'm like so overwhelmed, and I'm just like so happy because I have worked extra hard for this, and... When I say I've worked extra hard, meaning this is my third channel in case some of you guys are new to me. I've had another channel where I was hacked at 78,000 subscribers and YouTube didn't do a damn thing to help me get it back. And then I had another channel suspended at 50,000 subscribers when I first moved here. So I kind of gave up on YouTube and then I finally got this. Like I should have been had this shit, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm just so happy that I have you guys here to support me and to love me and to be my friend. So some people may find this to be like, eh, whatever, it, you know, but for me, it means a lot because for one, I don't really have many friends at all. I had, I had two friends out here in Arizona, but that bitch Nicole had to bust my motherfucking windows. You know, I'm Nicole, I'm talking about your bitch ass. Um, so that the only friend that I have left is my best friend, Rebecca, that lives out here. So YouTube is my outlet. YouTube has been my outlet before I even moved to Arizona. When I lived in Schenectady, New York, upstate New York, from New York City, because I'm from New York City, I didn't have any friends. I had a couple of friends that lived there. I'm lying. I had one friend. I didn't have any friends, okay? And I had made YouTube my outlet, and I'm, I made it my way to be able to 
communicate with the world and make friends and be able to talk to people because I don't get out much. I'm a homebody. I've never really been one to get out much as a kid. I just, that's just me. Like if you come out, you will never catch me at a club. Maybe once in a blue. No, you're never going to catch me at a club. Let's just be real. The, you would probably catch me more likely at a craft fair than at a motherfucking dance club because that's just how I am. That's the type of person. I don't really like to be a lot around a lot of rowdy people, even though I'm rowdy. I just get, I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like easy going, settled back i don't like like a lot of drama but if you bring the motherfucking drama a bitch will give it back to you but i i kind of like keep to myself i'm not saying i'm anti-social but um I, I was really shy as a kid really really shy as a kid so it was hard for me to make friends and when i first started youtube my first channel i was trying to be perfect like super duper perfect and do everything perfect and change who i was and it, it just didn't work out for me so i just was like you know after like a few videos i was like fuck it i'm gonna just be who i am and if they don't like it then they just don't like it it is what it is you know what i'm saying so i'm it thrills me and it makes me so happy to see that I have so many friends and family on social media that really like me for April. Like me, honestly, my life is boring. I don't do shit. I make wigs, I do videos and I spend time with my kids and that's just the person I am. Like I don't travel the world. I'm not like a lot of these other YouTubers who do all these other things like go on a red carpet or do like exciting things. I just don't find that appealing to me. Some of the things that people really like can engage on and find appealing, I just don't. Like if you were to sit at home with me and watch a movie with me and we sit and drink and watch and eat and watch TV and talk shit that would make my day like and just to chill out with my friends and have a cookout and stuff I'm good with that like I'm I'm just that type of person I'm just like really easy going it doesn't take a lot to make me happy I'm not bougie I don't think that the expensive things in life make you happy so I'm just that type of person so YouTube was an outlet for me when I first started and it still is so and when I say was because I'm able, I've, I've gained my friends and my family too. So I think that I have accomplished my goal as gaining friends and I'm, I still gain friends and I appreciate that. I'm so happy because it just thrills me that like all you guys think that I'm interesting to watch and you like me, like seriously me sometimes, let me tell you something. When I'm editing my videos, my own voice fucking irritates me. I don't know why, but it just fucking irritates me. And I guess when I'm high and I'm, I'm video editing, like high off of weed, nothing else. Okay, bitches, nothing the fuck else. My voice irritates me. So it, it, it kind of like fucks me up sometimes. Like, wow, people really like me. And like, wow, I'm interesting to people. So it really makes me feel good. And I'm so fucking happy right now. Like, I don't really know where I'm going to hang at, but a bitch is going to show this shit off proud. So if you see me out in public and I got this shit right here, like a boom box from back in the 80s, because you know a bitch is 43. And I got this on my shoulder, like, oh, yeah, I'm in, and I'm in the grocery store. Like, I have eggs, milk, uh, some bread. Okay, I need like a pound of lunch meat. Oh, th oh this? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, a bitch is motherfucking proud. Okay, let me tell you. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. It says Miss Muffin is my lovers. I really wasn't sure of what to call it because you can read, you can name it. So at first I was just like, you know what? Should I just name it Muffin is my lovers from my first channel? But then I want it to be called Miss because I'm a Miss motherfucker. I'm a Miss. I'm a Miss bitch. I'm a Miss boss. Whatever the fuck you want to call me, I'm a Miss. So I just want to say thank you for everyone because. For real, if you guys would subscribe to me and watch me, I wouldn't even be fucking having this play button. And like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they get like a million and shit or whatever. I'm good with that. If I don't get a million subscribers ever in life, I'm still good because you know what? I got friends and family here that watch me and talk to me and that's all that fucking matters. Some people do it for the fame and fortune. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. When I see people out in public and they know it's me, I be like, I be so excited. Like, seriously, I be like, hey, girl. I be like, they probably think I'm a weirdo because I get excited. Like, I really appreciate it. But then I have some people that be just jumping out of the woodworks. When I say jumping the fuck out of the woodworks, like, I be walking through or whatever, minding my business because I do mind my business and this bitch will jump out. Like, when I say literally jump the fuck out because I've had a couple people that jump the fuck out or have followed me to a bathroom in like an outlet mall and then when i came out the store it was like you muffins my lovers right like damn bitch you could have fucking said that to me like before i even came in the bathroom what the fuck you know what I'm saying? Or like another girl, she has literally like, I was somewhere and she jumped out. Like she was with a crowd of people and jumped out the fucking crowd. She's like, oh my God, your muffin is my lovers. I was like, no, I'm not. I was like, what? Who? She's like, your muffin is my lovers. And I was like, what? She was like, from YouTube. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, you got the wrong person. She's like, you look just like muffin is my lovers. And I was like, I was standing there with my kids and I was like, well, not all my kids, just with my son. And I just was like, 
Okay, I am off into my lovers. I said, but the way you jumped out like that, you kind of like scared me a little bit. So, you know what I'm saying? So shit like that kind of like scares me. Like, I don't, that shit is like a little bit too much. But if you just approach me, be like, hey girl, whatever, what's up, bitch? What's up, diva? Then I'm like, hey girl, I'm really exciting and I'm very happy to meet you. You know what I'm saying? I take selfies and shit. That's what the fuck I be doing. Like, you know what I'm saying? But then you get the other YouTubers who think because they got a certain amount of subscribers that they motherfucking Beyonce and shit. And they be just like... Bitch, you on the internet. It's just YouTube. You not that motherfucking relevant. All right? I'm just saying. Y'all know what the fuck I'm saying. Some of them bitches be taking that shit to the extreme. Like, you're just a YouTuber. Okay? You're not Michael Jackson, bitch. You're not motherfucking Beyonce. So, with that being said, I'm so happy and thankful. And I want to thank everybody for this because it would not be possible so thank you everyone for this plaque i, I don't know where i'm gonna put it a bitch probably gonna put it right there so everybody can see it when i'm doing my videos okay because i'm super proud of it like my kids are like super proud of me they're like you hanging it up what did you do like i don't even know like um i got on instagram a bitch is happy like Anyway, yeah, but just happy. So now on to the post office. So as I was leaving, I had to go drop off some wigs to the post office. Not drop them off, but mail them out, you know? So I went to check my post office box. <sighs> my post office box. And I was so excited because I got some love mail. I love love mail. Like, seriously, like, okay, a bitch got some Mother's Day cards and shit like that. And a motherfucking letter. I'm trying to find a letter because, oh, here it goes, right here. And a letter. So let me tell y'all something. Oh, God. If I don't stop saying, let me tell y'all something. So let me tell y'all something. Okay. Anyway. So I think it's really, like, cool. To me, it's cool. A lot of people don't do this anymore. They don't send letters. They don't send postcards. They don't write. They just email or text. That's cool, too. But I love to get love letters in the mail. So I want to send my first shout-out to Tammy, who has sent me this lovely love letter. And she basically... I'm not going to read everything because I really don't think that... Because this is, to me, it's personal, but... She just basically tells me how much she loves my Dollar Tree hauls with my family and she thinks that it's sweet and she adores me and my daughter and to keep up the good work. So stuff like this is very appreciative because I keep this. I keep this. And regardless of how much you guys think, a lot of people might be like, oh, it's just a card and it's a postcard. It means a lot to me because you done took the time out to fucking write this shit and take your ass to either the mailbox or the post office. Okay. So, I want to say thank you, Tammy, for noticing me and taking the time out to write me. Because I keep stuff like this. I have a little box of keepsakes, okay? I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Now, on to the next one. I'm, like, super excited. Like, seriously. So, this is from one of my divas from La, um, Houston, Texas. And I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Lucretia. So, you guys know Mother's Day is Sunday. But did she send me a Wonder Woman fucking a mother's day card y'all bitches know i love wonder woman like i listen i'm about to be 43 in june okay i would wear those under rules that's what we called them back in the day under rules and my mom got me some wonder woman ones and i had little cuffs like wonder woman and i'll be running around the house with my little wonder woman cape my little under rules you know because i thought i was motherfucking wonder woman i loved wonder woman so much so i have been getting some wonder woman stuff in the mail from everyone and i'm absolutely in love with wonder woman some people think that oh i'm gonna be wonder woman fans now bitch no you cannot be a wonder woman fan if you were never a fan when she first came the fuck out i'm just saying it don't work like that. You don't really know nothing about Wonder Woman. Like, seriously. My daughter, Tati, she bought me the whole DVD collection of Wonder Woman. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like in love with Wonder Woman. I got me a Wonder Woman nightgown, a Wonder Woman comic book, a Wonder Woman Barbie doll, a Wonder Woman patch, a Wonder Woman um, coloring book, Wonder Woman lipstick, a Wonder Woman card, Wonder Woman stamps. A bitch love some Wonder Woman, okay? So, yes, you guys, this was a Mother's Day card, and she did send me a lovely picture of herself, but I'm pretty sure she doesn't want everybody like you guys to see her picture. So, I'm not going to show you that, but I want to tell you, Lucretia, that I am so thankful. And though she says she's 52 years old, I think she's lying, okay? I think you're lying because there's... I want to show you guys this picture is so fucking bad because I think you're lying. She does not even look like she's in her 40s or 30s. She looks like she's in her late 20s. So, you know what they say, black, don't motherfucking crack. She looks so good for 52, like, amazing. 
amazing. Not a line, not a wrinkle, nothing. She looks amazing for her age. I wish I could show you guys, but quick flash, that's it. Beautiful, beautiful. But I want to say to her, thank you so much for the love. And she just basically said, April, you are so real. I love you. You are so open, and I love that, too. Keep doing what you're doing. I love your kids, and you are such a great mom. So you are so many life lessons to share. And I appreciate that. I love Listen, let me tell you something. I'm about to put this in my showcase because I'm super excited about this. So, oh, my God. Lucretia, happy Mother's Day to you, too. And I thank you so much for just taking the time out to go and purchase a car and to think about me. So, I love, I love shit like this. Like, I'm like, I, this is what hasn't made my day. Y'all just don't know. Then I got another Mother's Day card. And this one on the back, okay, it was in my post office. But I did say, real talk is the best in the world. In God we trust. All right, bitch. Okay. Hello. So she also sent me a Mother's Day card. And she told me how much she loves me. I love you, my sister. And have a bright and breezy, nice and easy, extra happy day. Love. And I'm going to try to say this name out because, you know, a bitch like me will botch everything. Love Z La askes at gmail.com i'm sure i botched it i'm pretty sure i have however i want to say thank you so much because you have also taken the time out to send me a mother's day card look i got mother's day cards from people that are not even my kids and it's not even mother's day yet so listen hashtag blessed a bitch is so happy you know something you guys really don't get it but I am very happy. I am so excited about this whole thing. And then the last but not least, I did get this letter in the mail. And I was so happy when I got this letter. I was reading it and then I seen something fell out. And I, as I was reading it, I'm going to read it to you. I was, dear April, Miss April, I was so upset about what that bitch Nicole did to you with messing up your car. You work so hard and you are so real with people, your subscribers, your family, and friends. We support you no matter what. Know we love you and we got your back, for real. I know you fixed your windshield, your car Already, but you took a hit and God is always good all day long. So move beyond the call. The bitch does not deserve your friendship. Bye Felicia. I only, I will only pray for Nicole and her kids. She is just in a whole lot of pain to mess with you. Miss April love who you are. Peace out. XXO from one former New Yorker to another former New Yorker. Okay, let me tell you something. I want to thank you so much, Karen. So when I was sitting there reading this in my car, I was just smiling because I was like, damn, she know how I feel. And you know what? She's so right. I'm going to leave that bitch alone. And if you guys don't know who I'm talking about, if you watched my last week's Real Talk episode, check it out. I had a friend, like I was saying, Nicole, this bitch fucking bust my windshield out of my car. And I have a picture, and I showed the police report, but she bust my windshield. But anyway, I, I had to pay for my windshield to get fixed. It was $190. Did Karen... Send me a check for $200. I almost cried in the car. She wrote, for Miss Muffin is my lover is a broken window. You know something? A lot of people may not have faith, and a lot of people may not be all that godly. I'm going to be one. I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't go to church anymore. I, I pray. When I pray, meaning I don't get on my knees and pray, but I talk to God every night, and I thank him. And I talk, meaning I have a conversation, like how I'm having a conversation with you guys right now, but I don't use the bad words, okay? But I have a conversation with him, and I'm just thankful to him, and I'm telling him how I feel and how my life is going, how I'm so blessed and so thankful because a lot of people a lot of people are greedy in the world. They need more and more and more. And I'm going to be honest with you. When I lost my first YouTube channel, you know, I was getting so many endorsements and so much money, and I didn't have a job. And when I lost that, I thought it was the end of the world. But, you know, some things, things happen for a reason. And though I may not get those endorsements like I did back then now, I will tell you this. I'm comfortable and I'm happy. And as long as my bills are paid and I have things on my back and I'm able to wash my ass and everything else, I'm blessed and I'm happy because there are some people in the world that don't even have that. So I want to tell you guys this. Be thankful and grateful for every fucking thing that you have, everything, because you never know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow and you don't have those things. So with that being said, things like this may not be, may not mean a lot to some, but to me, it's a lot. Like, seriously, it's a lot. And like she said, I did take a hit. Like, I didn't really deserve that, what she did, you know. I'll make a long story short. She got in my car and she talked shit to me. And I told her several times to stop, you know what I'm saying? She didn't. It was like 12 30 something in the morning, so I kicked her out of my car. And, you know, I was like, don't talk, don't call me back no more, basically. And she was like, oh, your number is lost. And I just basically told her, like, the motherfucking edges. Like, your motherfucking edges in that twisted ass wig. You know, 
So I did my police report and I have not heard anything back. I get a letter in the mail the other day from po police station. It had nothing to do with her. It just basically was like, we're so sorry to hear that you were a victim or such and such. Like, bitch, I'm not a motherfucking victim. Okay. My car is a victim. This bitch is going to be a motherfucking victim. Okay. But like Karen said, just leave it alone and go past that. However, this bitch going to pay. She going to pay. She going to pay me. And she going to pay for my motherfucking windshield. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like this with with you guys, I would never have no friends, no family, and I wouldn't have the things that I have now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm so grateful and thankful to everybody. And so with that being said, I want to thank everybody because I also have some more exciting news. So I want to thank everybody who has been helping me try to restore my teeth. I do have a GoFundMe, and I had to um, take the money out because GoFundMe... Unfortunately, they don't let you keep the money there and save it until you reach your goal. I didn't ever know that, which kind of sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. So I went ahead and I transferred the money over. So um, I'm waiting for it to clear my bank, like to transfer completely my bank. And I'm going to go ahead and get my teeth done. So I'm going to call in a dentist this week. I'm going to go ahead and get my five teeth, the remainder five. I think it's like five or six. It might be six now because I felt like one of the teeth are broken. I'm going to get those removed and I'm going to go get my dentures. I know y'all bitches like a dentures, not like the full motherfucking old people dentures. Okay, bitches. I'm talking about something that I have to put, I have to put it right here because I only have one tooth on the side. So that way my teeth don't keep spreading because that's how I got the gap so and I'm excited about that because this is day four day four meaning I've had a lot of pressure on this tooth it feels like you ever have pressure like it feels like it can wiggle it's it hurts but it's not like a painful sore it just feels like pressure and I think my tooth is trying to move to the left you know like how they be like swipe to the left if you don't like that picture or whatever some shit like that if I'm wrong let me know but that shit been moving to the left. That's why my teeth are so spaced out. So I need the dentures so that way it'll give me some teeth on the side and it'll also keep my teeth from moving. So I have enough to get my five teeth removed and also to get my dentures. And then I'm still, I still need to get my um, crowns in the front and on the bottom. So if, for those of you guys who have helped me, I want to say huge thank you for everybody because for real, I would still be with these rotten teeth. They're not rotten, but they've been breaking off, and I'm not really sure what's going on. My mom, my mom has um, Graves' disease and periodontist disease, so I'm wondering if that's like kind of inherited. But anyway, either either here nor there, I want to thank you guys for helping me get my teeth fixed because I have insurance, but it doesn't cover dental, so unfortunately, I was paying out of pocket, and I've been saving up. I've been saving up just to get my teeth fixed. It's fucked when your teeth hurt like trust me when you have bad teeth and you have bad teeth pain it really really hurts so i want to thank you everybody for helping me and if you are interested in donating and having the link is for you guys below so yes you guys i'm super excited about that i know y'all bitches like you about to get five teeth pulled out at one time why the fuck would you be excited about that i'm excited because i'm tired of my teeth hurting you know what i'm saying if i ain't got no teeth in the back oh well a bitch just you know what i'm saying i can't wait to get my denture piece like seriously because i'm gonna show y'all bitches y'all gonna be like um yeah i'm gonna show y'all bitches my little denture teeth like what well, pop them shits on, on camera and off camera i don't give a fuck you know why because y'all got me these this denture pieces it was because of y'all that i got the denture pieces and i have no shame it's it is what it is nobody's perfect in the world you know what i'm saying nobody is perfect so we all have some type of ailments we all have some type of shit going on in our lives so nobody is fucking perfect so i want to thank you guys now on to the next in case you're wondering about my shirt i was scrolling and trolling not not trolling but scrolling through instagram and i seen this company i don't really remember who it was but they they had these shirts for sale and it was one of my favorite shows in the whole wide world which is the walking dead and it said um what did it say don't mess with the woman who was born in June. So you guys know this is Negan and he's got the bat Lucille. And I don't know what the fuck happened, but I did not order a crew neck. And every time I kept fixing it in my cart for the V-neck, it kept messing up. So when it came to me, it came as a crew neck. I really didn't want it. So I just fucking cut it up. I cut it up to make it like more feminine and more fashionable for me. I think I, I think I kind of went a little bit overboard. You know, it is what it is. I still like the shirt and I'm still going to wear it. But I really didn't feel like sending it back. And as you guys know, my birthday is in June. I am a Gemini, so June 19th is my birthday. And 
I was so happy when I seen this. I'm not a big fan of Negan. I can't stand his ass, but it was it had to do with The Walking Dead and had to do with my birth month. So I went ahead and purchased it. So yes, and just cut it up today um, before I put it on because I just I can't do the crew necks because let me tell you something. It gets hot as a motherfucker out here, and I hate shit that's like all tight on my neck. So I try to stay cool as much as possible. So with that being said, a bitch had to cut the collar off, cut it up, and make it more feminine, feminine as possible. And this is an extra large in women and it's awful big awful fucking big so i think they was lying about that too now i lost some weight but i didn't fucking smoke crack i mean i didn't lose all that weight I went from 223 and I am now 206. And I know a lot of people have been asking me because they've been watching my fashion videos how I've been losing weight. Let me tell you something. I did walk. I was walking three miles a day. I haven't walked three miles in like a minute now, like for three weeks. The last time I walked uh, three miles was like uh, a week and a half. And I really don't want to count that because I was very consistent with it. I was walking six days a week. And lately I haven't been doing that because it's not that I've been lazy, but I have so many appointments to go to, meaning for my keloid, for my knee for my health for my kids the dentist and stuff so it was messing up with my walking schedule so I really wasn't able to get on track and plus also I get kind of lonely sometimes with walking but the main reason why I started walking it really didn't have anything to do with my weight it had to do with my health at my age I'm 42 years old and I have arthritis in my right knee and it has gotten so bad to where I wasn't able to sleep nights the, it would it would go away for like a month or a month and a half and then when the pain would come back it would just get worse and worse and I wasn't able to sleep at night and I I felt like I was just aging and I didn't want to feel like that anymore. I, I'll never forget the night that I laid in the bed. Um, I was laying in the bed and I just was, I think I was on my phone and I was looking at people like my age and I just started feeling really decrepit and old and crippled because I'm 42 years old. I can't even walk through the mall or walk through the grocery store without my legs starting to hurt and being out of breath and feeling crippled or walking upstairs to my bedroom, my legs hurting. I go take me like two minutes to walk up my steps and my I got tired of that like there's no excuse for me to feel that way so I, I didn't start walking to lose weight I did it because I wanted my legs to feel better I have for one I already have poor circulation I have really bad varicose veins and I have veins where they burst and I get blood clots in my legs so I'm supposed to wear those socks though you know those socks they're ugly ass socks um, and it's supposed to help my circulation so for one I already have that and to have arthritis is another thing so I was already going to physical therapy but that shit was kind of like somewhat not helping and I figured let me try to walk let me try to walk and build my strength up and you know something it did help it, it really really helped me a lot I don't get tired when I go walking anymore I don't get tired when I go to the grocery store or walk to the uh, mailbox I don't get tired when I walk up the steps and it really didn't have anything to do with losing weight I was kind of comfortable with my weight I, it wasn't that I was comfortable but it was who I was and I wasn't going to worry about the next skinny bitch next door versus me um so that is the reason why i started walking it has to do with how i felt about being crippled at the age of 42 and i wasn't crippled but i felt like i was just like wasting away um but for my weight loss it seemed like whenever i work out sometimes and walk it wasn't really helping my weight loss so i started going back to my own handy dandy hydroxy cut so this is really what helped me lose weight um this is my third bottle not really third bottle but I have used this uh, many times and it's always helped me and it it just boosts my metabolism and it makes me have more energy and it actually does help me lose weight so this is what I use I'm opposed to exercising I do exercise as well but this helps me sometimes we all need a little cheat and shit so that's what helped me um, and I use that you are supposed to take four pills a day two twice a day so two twice a day and that's what helped me um and it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? So I went from 223 to 206, and I'm happy about that. And I, I want to lose a few more pounds. I wish I could lose my belly fat, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it is It is all within time. I, I don't want to be crackhead skinny, but I just want to be healthy, and I don't want to feel like I can't lose weight. Because I, I want to lose some weight, but let me tell you something. If you don't like me for who I am, then I guess you really don't fucking like me. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. People put a lot of shit on, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to look like this. I want to look like that girl on Instagram. Fuck them bitches on motherfucking Instagram. You know what I'm A lot of people, they be like, oh, you so pretty. You so pretty to me. Bitch, do you see me when the fuck I wake up in the morning? A bitch don't look all that great. You know what I'm saying? Every These bitches that you see on Instagram, they put on makeup and they do all kind of shit to make themselves look better. You know what I'm saying? Or enhance their beauty. So, And I'm one of those. Like, I put on makeup. You think I woke up like this? Because neither did fucking Beyonce. That bitch didn't wake up like that. 
she put on some motherfucking makeup and hair. She enhanced her beauty. So I just feel like it's really important. Like, I'm really so sick and tired of people body shaming other people and shit. Like, cut it the fuck out. Whoever said that being skinny is right and whoever said that being over skinny is not right. Like, who? where is it say that in any fucking where? You know what I'm saying? We are all human beings and we're not meant to be the same. And me, for one, I hate people that talk about other people's clothes or their size, or where they live at, or what they drop. I hate that shit because you know what? You don't know what they went through to get that shit. You should be happy with the fuck you got and don't worry about what the next person got. What they got may be less than what the fuck you got, but I bet you it's really more than what you got. You understand what I'm saying? So I hate when when people body shame and talk about what other people don't have and shit like that. Like, okay, I'm quick to tell a bitch she ain't got no motherfucking edges. It is what it is, bitch. If you ain't got no motherfucking edges, you ain't got no motherfucking edges. Who fault is that? That's your fault. Okay? And especially if you're talking shit in my car, bitch, you ain't got no motherfucking edges. But anyway, that's another story. Um, but, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to be happy within my skin. And that's basically it. So that's what I use to lose weight. Like, I don't really do anything spectacular. I'm not trying to live at the motherfucking gym and be starving myself because life is short. I'm trying to enjoy whatever life I have, okay? I'm not worried about being a size six. I'm not worried about eating fucking cardboard and lettuce and everything all day. Life is short. I'm not worried about looking like anybody else but April, okay? So, yes, that is what I have been using. And But other than that, um, yeah, we're going to get into this real talk because I know I didn't talk to your motherfucking ears off enough, okay? Hey, April, you know who this is, but for the sake of the video, you can call me London. That is a pretty ass name. So, I have a son who is currently 15 and will be 16 in June. I wonder when in June. His father passed away last year. My son was very close with him, and ever since his passing, he has been acting out. He has been staying out late, getting horrible grades, and at times talking back with disrespectful tones to me. He is already aware that I am not the one to play with, but he still tries me. I've already kicked him out once, but my loved ones have convinced me to take him back and be patient. He is also very ungrateful. I do what I can when I can for him. In fact, he is very privileged compared to a lot of kids in his school. Back in the day, I would get my teeth knocked out by my own parents for being disrespectful but now if I did that to him I would go straight to jail laugh out loud so I need help or suggestion as to how to punish him he is also very vain and conceited and also thinks about girls shoes materialistic things I've already had a girl banging down my door talking about he called her a bitch and a thought I told her I would correct him about it and then I told her to get the hell on off my damn doorstep London he said that they were in a relationship. My son said they were in a relationship. I told both of them that they don't even know the definition of a relationship. I further told my son that if he is dealing with a girl, that it's better to be just friends and not put labels and not put labels on relationships as young as he is. <coughs> Excuse me. Girl, this new generation is a trip and too much for me. You ain't never lie. So I wanted to know your thoughts on this because I keep telling him that just because his father has passed, that doesn't give him a pass or an excuse to act out. Thanks for listening and considering for real talk. I've enclosed a couple of pics of my son also. You can see that he is feeling himself a little too hard. <coughs> okay, excuse me, guys. First of all, he is so cute. He's a cute young man. He's cute, and you can tell he's all about the fashion. And the sneakers and shit. Okay, you know what? Let me tell y'all something. I have I have two sons. And my other son, who is 18, he's 18. He'll be 19 in June. And my other son is 24. Let me tell you something. It seems like when it's the boys at that age, they do start feeling themselves. And you know what I really think it's from? Getting some pussy. Honestly, I think they got a piece of the pie and they don't know how to act. Because let me tell y'all something. When my son, when he, my oldest son, he's 24 now, he'll be 25 in June. He got a piece of ass. I know he got a fucking piece of ass, all right? They've been together. They, they're they still together. They've been together almost 10 years. He started acting different. He started being disrespectful, very argumentative with me, confrontational. Busted out my back door window, not once, but twice. And then he started talking about all kind of weird shit, like, oh, the devil made him do it. All kind of weird shit, you know what I'm saying? So I had to have him removed by the proper authorities from my home that night. Because for one, I'm really not into people breaking my fucking windshield. And also, I'm really not into people talking about the devil and this and that. When you start talking shit like that, I think it's time you go get some motherfucking help. So I did 
put him in a mental ward or the hospital. He was put in the hospital and they put him in a mental ward. And basically what I was told is that there's some type of hormone in young men at that age, like 15, that it just like escalates. And some of them, some of them go off of it and some of them, they're able to control it. But they get to be a little antsy and very like argumentative and confrontational and very bold and disrespectful. Let me tell you something. That's cool if they got some type of hormone in their body that do that shit. But let me tell you this. I'm not the motherfucking one. So if you want to have that type of motherfucking hormone, a bitch got hormones too. You really don't want to see me act the fuck up. So, you know, I put him in there and he was in there for quite some time. Like, almost two weeks. And of course I went to visit him. They tried to put him on medication and I didn't allow it. We went back and forth with the shit. He, he tried me again. He tried me again. He tried me again. And after a while that shit is like, you know what, dude, I'm done. Now, eventually he had to be put on medication and he's changed a lot. So he's not the same type of person, but let's go. Let's fast forward. Now my other son who's 18, I know he got a piece of the pie because once he got a piece of this pie for whoever this little girl is, cause I met her, he just started acting really different. Like, he was always a great kid. Now, mind you, he was always messy. He was already motherfucking messy. Like, messy, like meaning didn't clean up his room like that. He still is like that. But he never was the type to talk shit or talk back to me. But it seemed like over this past fucking year, I had to put his ass out of my house three motherfucking times. One is because, one time is because you're not about to talk shit to me in my motherfucking house. And on top of that, they seem like, when they get that teenage years, they start feeling themselves. And I'm sorry, but they always think that we as parents and older don't know what the fuck we talk about. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm 42 years old. How the fuck you think I got here? I may not know everything, but nigga, I guarantee you, I know more than your stupid ass do. You know what I'm saying? So they start feeling themselves. And I'm like this, you're not about to be up in my motherfucking house talking shit to me. Like I ain't no motherfucking body. Cause your black ass be put out. But it seemed like it started when he got this little piece of pie and then he started getting a job and making his own money before then it was all about him i was doing for him every day ma you got you got some singles boy you know i don't carry no cash in me you got twenty dollars i could have you got like okay so this started going on escalating every day he was getting twenty dollars from me he was getting twenty dollars from me and i'm the type of parent i'm not about to see you go outside and hang out with your friends and you don't got no money in your pocket because i would hate for you to be around your friends and they eating and you ain't eating so of course i'm the type of person i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you because i didn't have it like that as a kid my mom was poor we lived in the projects and sometimes I wouldn't even have Christmas presents. You know, I never had like the really good sneakers. They had four lines on them instead of three, you know what I'm saying? So as I got older and I was able to provide for my kids, I just swore I was never going to allow them to have to go through the heartache and the pain and just the ridiculing of from kids as I did when I was growing up. Cause kids can be really cruel. So I gave and I gave and I gave. And now it's funny thing, I have five kids and I've gave and I've gave and I've gave to each and every last one of my kids. But the only two that have acted up, talk shit to me and kind of like sometimes treat me like shit is my sons. My daughters don't do that. So I think it's some type of boy thing. And you know something, I got tired of giving and 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 giving. And, giving. and eventually I was like, I'm not giving shit. You need to find a motherfucking job because I'm giving you like a hundred dollars a week. Nigga, do you motherfucking work for me? You know what I'm saying? So I started not giving him anything anymore. And to this day, I don't really give him anything. If he if he if he wants to borrow something from me, a bitch like me will hound you down. I don't give a fuck if it's ten dollars. I'm gonna need my money the fuck back. You know what I'm saying? So with my son, who's now 18, he we, we went through that. You know what I did? I just stopped giving him shit. Because just like you said, you give him when you can. You gotta stop giving him shit. You gotta stop giving him shit and you have to let him know. I'm not giving you shit until I see your grades go up and I see how you can respect me as a mother and a fucking woman and your provider. I wouldn't give him shit. He 15, about to be 16 in June. He wants some motherfucking sneakers and he want to look cute in his little baseball caps and shirts and motherfucking book bags. Then he need to find himself a fucking job. It's about to be summertime. He's got about to be on summer vacation. He needs to find himself a job and provide for himself. And what I would do if I were you, I would tell him, I'm not buying you no fucking school clothes for next upcoming school semester because you don't know how to act and you don't know how to treat nobody. And why the fuck should I give you some school clothes when all your grades suck? Sometimes it's what you got to do because they start feeling themselves too much. They get a piece of pussy and they feel themselves and they feel like they're undefeatable. They're like, like, 
like exempt from shit. Like, dude, you're only a teenager. Grow the fuck up. Because if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have shit with your little snatch crumb, your little crumb snatching ass. You know, you got to let them know. Your shit do stink. Go wash under your little armpits, okay? And wash your little underwear. Because I see the motherfucking streaks. Get it the fuck together. You have to let them know at times. It ain't about that. I'm not going to do for you. Because the more you do for them and the more you provide them with, the more they disrespect you and the less respect they have for you. You know what I'm saying? So in my opinion, I won't get his ass shit. Like, I won't get shit. You gonna have to earn your keep. With my kids, you have to earn your keep. I got dishes, garbage, bed to be made, and everything else. You have to earn your fucking keep with me. I ain't giving you shit. It is what it is. So in my opinion, I would definitely not give him anything. And he's probably going to hate that so much because, you know, he's a kid. He's trying to keep up with the Joneses, come out with the fresh shit. I'm going to give him shit. Take away what the fuck he has now and don't give him no new shit. That's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? And also, you can go upside his motherfucking dome piece. I'll go upside his fucking head. I have no qualms and no problem about going upside somebody's motherfucking head. Like... I feel like this. If you could talk shit, then I'm going to go inside your head. That's just how I feel. I'm old school. And she's right. The kids today, they will call CPS on you, and they'll be like, did you just hit your motherfucking kid? Oh, we're going to take you to jail. Oh, for real? Take me. Take Or we're going to take your kid from me. That's the first thing they'll do. They'll either say, we're going to take your kid from you. You'll be like, oh, take the motherfucker then. Bye. Nigga, buy shit. You don't know how good you had it here. So now you want to call the fucking police on me and shit? Now they taking your ass to foster care, a juvenile delinquent? I see how you like that shit. Hmm. That's just my opinion, and that's what the fuck I would do. I would let his ass know. I'm sorry, but I'm the one who paid the bills up in here. I'm the call. I'm the one who pays the cost to be the fucking boss. And if you can respect that, well, the door is right there. You could take up. You could pack the shit that you bought and mer- move on your merry way, or you could chill the fuck out and do the right thing, and then I help you. And if you don't, I'm not giving you shit. That's how I feel. Bottom line. Well, hey girl, hey, hey girl, hey. How are you, beautiful queen? You can just call me purple. I'm going to get straight to the point. So my best friend, let's call her pink. We have been friends for 10 years. I have always been there for her through thick and thin. Every time she has gone through something, I have always been there for her to to the best of my ability. Throughout our friendship, there have been times when she would just completely cut me off for months at a time. And I never knew the reason why or understood why. I would blow up her phone by calling or texting and she would never respond back. Eventually, after months go by, she would hit me up and act like everything was good. And she hasn't spoken to me like she hasn't spoken to me in months. And I would ask her, what happened? Why did you ignore me for all that time? She would never give me a reason why. So last year, she moved to another state with a man who took care of her and her kids. And I was gen- I was genuinely happy for her. I felt like this would give her a chance to start a new life. I moved to another state as well to better my life. And I deleted all of my social media pages to concentrate on getting my life in order. And I have been so blessed ever since I made that decision. A few months ago, I created a social media page. And of course, I follow people I knew, including Pink and her baby daddies. She texted me one day and said, I don't want you to follow my baby daddies. I don't want any of my friends following them. So I want you to block them so they won't contact you. Me being a friend, I said, okay, and went on my social media to unfollow them. And I noticed that her other friends are following both of her baby daddies. And she only asked me to unfollow them. And I thought that was very strange for her to even ask me to block them. But her other friends are following them. A few days after that, she posted up a picture saying that one of her kids has a disease. And the post said, I have been knowing about this for weeks and only my close friends and family know about. No, but now I want to tell the world. I instantly started crying. I felt bad for her son, but I also was upset that she said she only told her close friends and family, but she never told me. So are we not close friends anymore? I texted her when I saw the post and I asked her why she didn't tell me about the disease. Why did I have to find out through social media? Pink said that she didn't tell me because I was happy and I was doing good in my life. I said, what does that mean? Me being happy had to do with her not telling me. 
your best friend, that's one of your kids that have a disease. We always tell each other everything. The good and this bad situation shouldn't be any different. She replied by saying, this situation is different. I said, call me so we can talk about it. She said she would call me back after she gets the kids to bed. That was over a month ago, and I haven't heard from her since. April, can you give me some advice on what to do? I am tired of always being the one to chase her down and try to find out why she always cuts me off without any explanation. I'm getting to the point where I'm over it. Thanks, Purple. Well, hmm. Seems like this, Purple. She don't really consider you a motherfucking friend no more, okay? If she can go without months talking to you and not wanting to reach out to you and not explain herself, seems like she don't consider you her motherfucking friend. And you know something? Let me tell you something. It's never good to kiss anybody's ass. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm not about to beg you for your motherfucking friendship. This is what the fuck I'm not going to do. Bitch, if you don't want to be my motherfucking friend, then okay, you just don't want to be my motherfucking friend. I'm not about to kiss your ass and lick your wounds for you to be my friend. And I'm going to give you a scenario. Now, remember when I told you a few weeks ago how a, a few, a, a, it's been a minute, probably like a month and a half, that I was probably going to reach out to my friend that I used to be friends with. And I just stopped talking to her because I just felt like what she did to me. I know she was talking about me, and I just left it alone. I didn't confront her because I knew she wasn't going to say anything. But I still care for her because she's still my friend. I still love her because we, we, we've we grown as a friendship. We had a friendship. But I wanted to explain to her the reason why I stopped speaking to her and also let her know that I still care for her. Well, I, I wrote out this long text message, and I kept it in the draft. I never sent it. Never sent it. Um, and I didn't send it when I wrote it, written it up because I wanted to feel comfortable and I wanted to do it when I felt the time was right. You know what I'm saying? So a couple of weeks had went by after I had put it in draft and this one particular night, it was probably like three weeks ago, I felt the need to press the button send. And I did that. I pressed the button send. It was this long, long overdrawn email. I mean, not email, message. And unfortunately, like... Within an hour and even the next day, I felt stupid for even pressing send because after I spilled out my heart to you and let you know, like, listen, how I felt and what you did, I know was wrong. And also, I wanted to be a woman and not and tell you this is the reason why I stopped speaking to you. Like, we didn't have to be friends again, but I sent her this text message because I wanted to be the bigger person and let her honestly know why I stopped speaking to her because I would never want to be left in a situation to where... I'm left in the clouds and I don't understand why you're not my friend anymore. So if I don't want to feel like that, I don't want anybody else to feel like that. You know what I'm saying? You treat others as you want to be treated. So I felt kind of stupid because I sent her this long text message and basically was just basically saying, you know, I'm, I, I just want to explain to you why I wasn't, wasn't, when I stopped speaking to you. Make a long story short to get to the point. She ain't never responded to the text message. She didn't respond to the text message. I don't know if it's because maybe she changed her phone number or maybe she blocked me from texting her, or maybe she just didn't want to, but I felt so stupid. But then it's like, you know what, April, you can't feel stupid because you tried. And then I was like, maybe I should have just emailed it to her. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, if we become friends again, then that would be great. But I just felt like I owed her that explanation to tell her why I stopped speaking to her. And because she didn't respond to me, it made me feel some type of way. But still, it was like, you know something? I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to leave it the fuck alone. Because I did what I was supposed to do, which was become a stronger person and a woman. And sent her this text message apologizing to her. You know, I did say to her, yeah, I did. Sh I thought I did I said to her the text message, I did throw shade on you on social media. And I did talk about you, but I want to apologize to you because... That wasn't the womanly thing to do. I should have just said how I felt about you instead of throwing shade. But I knew the type of person that you were, you weren't going to admit to it. So that's why I left you alone. So me being the woman that I am, I sent a text message. I pressed send. And I didn't hear back from her. And you know something? I'm not going to continuously beat myself out about it. But I just wanted to put an end, not an end to the friendship, but an end to the curiosity of why. I just left you the fuck alone and didn't speak to you anymore. 
you know, because it's not a good feeling. And maybe we, maybe in life, later on in life, we can make an amends, you know what I'm saying? Because... I don't really like to leave anything just left alone. And that's what anybody... I feel like if you are a friend to somebody, then you are a friend to them. Friend is a really strong word, so I feel like this. You know what I'm saying? And like, So I felt like I owed her this. And I felt like as a friend, and we were really good friends at the time, that I, I was supposed to do this. And what I did wasn't really right by just leaving it and not saying anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I was wrong for throwing shade. I'm not saying I was wrong for that. But I mean, it's like she was wrong for what she did too, but two wrongs don't make a right. So what I'm basically getting around to is this. Let me tell you something. Um, purple. You've already done what you were supposed to do as a friend. And you've reached out to her. And you've expressed your feelings and concerns. And you've been there for her. You ain't got to brown nose to no motherfucking body to be your friend. If that bitch don't want to be your friend and she feels like you're not her close friend, then you know what? Sometimes we got to move on. We grow up and we grow out of our friendships with some people. And we mature and they don't. Or they mature and we don't. Either way, I ain't about to brown nose to no motherfucking bitch. If you don't want to be my friend, then oh well, bitch. There's a dime. There's a, there's a hundred more of you motherfuckers out there. Don't feel like your shit don't stink and you feel like you better than somebody. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't got to kiss her ass to be your friend. You have done your duties as a friend, okay? And you have reached out to her and you have expressed concern to her. Now, it is in turn her time to reach back out to you and be a friend. However, if she doesn't and she goes for months and months without speaking to you, then you know something? That is the type of person that you do not need in your motherfucking life, okay? Honestly. And like maybe I was that type of friend that... My friend didn't need in her life when I just cut her off. However, you were still throwing shade at me. So I had to leave you alone for a minute. And I needed to regain my thoughts. Even if it was a year or more, I had to think about shit. So my advice to you on this matter is you have done everything you have to do. If you have to constantly keep reaching out to somebody and calling them and they don't return your call or responding to them or asking them what's their concerns or if they just cut you off and they don't want to talk to you and then they want to come back to you in your life when it's convenient to them because that's what I still call convenient. Oh, now you want to be my motherfucking friend? Oh, now you want to reach out to me because it's convenient to you, right, bitch? Either you ain't got nothing fucking going on or you ain't got no motherfucking friends and now you want to come crawling back to me. Nah, it don't work like that. Let me tell you something. As long as you continuously try to brown nose to that bitch and try to be her motherfucking friend, she's going to continuously treat you like dirt and she's going to consider you a not so close friend. Fuck her and her baby daddies. You don't need to be friends with her on Facebook or any social media as well as that as her kids' fathers, okay? It's time to move on. It's 2017. I always tell y'all, life is too motherfucking short. If a bitch don't want to be my friend, oh well, bye, bitch, bye. I don't need you to be my motherfucking friend. I am not about to kiss your ass. Life is too short because let me tell y'all this. I thought Nicole was my motherfucking friend, but I was taught a real good lesson in life. That bitch was never your motherfucking friend april because real friends don't bash in motherfucking real friends windows that's the type of shit you don't do i have realized and learned to realize that i have friends i have good friends i have my best friend rebecca and i have my best friend shay those are my friends okay those are my real friends they would never do no shit like that to me ever in life who fucking goes around and bashing somebody's motherfucking windows in at the age of 45 okay there was a reason why I kicked you out of my car, bitch. You was being disrespectful. You don't be disrespectful in nobody else's shit. So she wasn't a real friend to me. However, I was naive to think she motherfucking was. But I, either that bitch is crazy or she was jealous. Either one, I'm done with her. And I wiped her under the motherfucking doormat. Just like I did with all the other scallywag bitches that I have come across. And who portrayed themselves as being a friend to me. And really fucking wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Friends are hard to find. So the ones that you do have that are real genuine friends. You need to hold on to them for dear life. Yeah, you and her were friends for 10 years. But let me tell you something. That 10 years don't mean shit to her. Okay? 10 years may seem like it's a long time for some. But some people who don't value it, it ain't shit to them. So you know what? You did your time. You did your 10 years with that bitch and you've seen who she really the fuck is now it's time for you bitch to move the fuck on and go find some real motherfucking friends that you can include in your circle that's what i'm saying these bitches these days they will cut your motherfucking throat in a heartbeat and not even think twice about it you think they're your friends when they're not she's talking about oh go and follow and, and go and follow my friends or my baby daddies why because you you doing some scandalous shit and you don't want me to know about it or what you jealous of me or how i look am i prettier than you it is what it is either way 
unfollow that bitch and block her from your life and move on. Because as long as you dwell on that shit and you unhappy, you're not going to be happy. You're going to be sitting here worried about her. Let me tell you something. There's a plenty of bitches out there who want to be your friend. Okay? And who can be your friend? Fuck her and her fake ass friendships and her baby daddy and leave her the fuck alone. This is what I would do. I would leave her alone. I would not send her any messages. I wouldn't even say, you know what? I tried. I wouldn't send her a fucking thing. What I would do is the next time that bitch respond to me, I would respond back and I would let her know, you know something? Pink. I was your friend and I thought we were really good friends and I was always there for you as you were to me. But I got really tired of you knocking me down and not responding and blocking me and talking to me in such a sort of way and making me feel like I wasn't important enough in your life. So with that being said, I'm going to have to end our friendship. I wish nothing but the best for you and your children. I love you and I always will, but for my own sanity, I'm going to have to end this friendship. And that's what the fuck I would do. I would tell this bitch that the next time she com communicates with you, okay? Don't go out of your way to reach out to her. Let that bitch communicate to you. And when she does, hit her with that shit, okay? Hit that bitch with that shit. Let that bitch know. Bitch, you ain't all that shit. What the fuck? You think you better than bitch? I swear, these bitches these days think they better than everybody. Just like Nicole looking like she starred in the motherfucking Planet of the Apes. Like, come on, bitch. You look like a monkey's ass. You trying to talk shit to me. Trying to tell me that you... <laughs> Don't call your number is lost. I'm like your mother. You ain't got no edges, bitch. Like your motherfucking edges. Okay. So I'll just leave it alone. And I don't worry about these scallywag bitches because let me tell you something. If we ain't friends now and we ain't really good friends, I guarantee you tomorrow or next week I'm not gonna fuck with you and I'm not gonna be your friend. I don't beg I don't beg for friends because if you ain't my motherfucking friend or you don't want to be my friend or you don't want to fuck with me, that's good because you know why? At the end of the motherfucking day, a bitch get, got five kids and two motherfucking grandkids and all my friends in social media on social media. I don't really give a fuck if a bitch out here in the world don't want to be my friend no more. Bitch, bye. I don't really give a fuck. Okay, because I got friends, I got family. I don't need you. Okay, I'm not going to lose any motherfucking sleep over you. Just like Nicole, she felt like she was going to bust my window and that was going to like hurt my heart and set me back. The only motherfucking did, thing it did was piss me the fuck off. All right? Yes, piss me the fuck off. So let Purple know how you would handle the situation. I would just be like over it. Like she said, she's over it. And honey child... I would be over that shit too. Seriously. I'm some real shit. So this is going to be the last real talk of the day, you guys. This is like, uh, let's see. It's not too long. She sent me a pretty picture herself, her gorgeous self. And hopefully my memory card don't, don't stop. Uh, if it does, okay. Hey, April, I love your real talk videos. You can call me Monique. For nearly three years, I have been dating this guy. Let's call him Wes. On and off. We were in our early 20s. He's, he's in college an hour away. So most of our relationship has been long distance. The first year of our relationship was great and stable. This is May of 2014 to September of 2015. And then shit hit the fan. This asshole starts cheating on me. Um, cheating on me at this point with random bitches. Some girl gives him chlamydia and gonorrhea in the midst of all of this. I hadn't visited during the time, so I knew there was no chance that I had contracted it. And I gave it to him. But still there was the fact that he cheated. At this point, I had to walk away. Fast forward to August of 2016 when he came back into my life and we got back together. Things were great again up until recently. Now he comes to me talking about some girl he met on Tinder last year, came back into his life, and now he doesn't want to be with me anymore. He keeps crying about how sorry he is because I didn't do anything wrong and whoop, whoop, all of that shit. Although it's almost been two months since this happened, I still want to be his ass because he abruptly abandoned me for no reason, along with the girl. But I'm not trying to go and catch an assault charge. In, in, in another county. Needless to say, I'm super heartbroken. I've invested a lot of time in him. And so now that's it over. I don't know what else to do. Let me tell you something, Monique. I think that's what she told me to call her. Monique. First of all, let me tell you something. I'm not a lesbian, okay? But she fucking hot as hell, okay? If I was a dude or I like bitches, I would be all over this girl, okay? Like, on some real shit. Y'all, like, I'm saying. I mean, like, you know, I did have a girlfriend before. Or did I tell y'all that? Okay, all right. So, yeah, I did have a girlfriend um, after my marriage was over. But 
I'm not a lesbian, okay? I just was going through some shit. But I'm saying, though, she pretty as a motherfucker. And a bitch like me, if I wasn't, like, wanting to be with men, I'd be all, like, bitch, open the motherfucking door. A bitch is here. What you need, what you want. She pretty as fuck. Let me tell you something. Dudes come a dime a dozen. And it's so fucking unfortunate that they think that their dick, their eggplant can that produces motherfucking gold nigga let me tell you something when there's you there's a whole bunch of other you okay now of course like i said in my last video you about to be heartbroken you're going to be heartbroken because it's recent let me, okay but know this if this nigga can meet a next bitch that he was fucking with back on tinder and fuck with her again and leave you then you know something he is not worth your time energy or effort at fucking all, all right? I think Tinder is the one where you match up with dudes that want to fuck. I don't really know what Tinder is. I know it's one of those type of apps, but let me tell you this. He already cheated on you and gave you chlamydia and gonorrhea. That right there should have been a life lesson to leave this dirty dick motherfucker alone. Dirty dick motherfucker, okay? Seriously, this dirty dick motherfucker. Because you fucking bitches raw it's one thing to cheat but then you gonna fucking cheat and not wear a condom you dirty dick motherfucker let me tell you something monique maybe it's a blessing in disguise that this bitch then came back into his life and then you can move on because you never know what this nigga is doing he probably still cheating and swinging his little fucking dirty dick ass all over the place giving bitches kind of gonorrhea chlamydia herpes whatever the fuck it is call it a blessing okay and a thank you to get the fuck away from him because he's the type of dude that you just don't want to fuck with he need to be a poster board for stds okay on some real shit because if you can go back and forth from bitches and you got one that treats you good and as beautiful as you are and then he want to go back on tinder and meet the next bitch then you know something he's not worth your time and effort we as females get strung out on these dudes who are no good for us and then when the right one comes along we don't know how to fucking act and we're not used to that shit because we're used to those niggas who treat us like shit or these thugged out niggas and it's unfortunate that it be like that but that's the shit that we get used to and then when a real man come along who is about making money and a career we don't know how to accept that and he's polite and he's respectable we don't know how to accept that and we we put ourselves in these predicaments with men like this who ain't about shit let me tell you something heartbroken is one thing respect is another let yourself, I'd rather be heartbroken than be disrespected. You got yourself out of a good relationship and he did you a favor. All this bullshit he talking about, he crying because you never did something, whoop de whoop please. That's a front for some shit. He ain't crying on the inside. That nigga don't give a fuck. Because if he really gave a fuck, he would have never did that shit in the first place. All right? So he ain't crying. He just want to make himself feel good and feel better to where the fact is if he ever call you again in life and try to get back with you, you're going to go ahead back to him in open arms. But let me tell you this. You need to block him from every motherfucking thing. Social media, phone number everything you need to block his ass and keep the way keep away from him heartbroken you're gonna get over it eventually we all go through some shit in a relationship and we break up and of course it hurts our hearts because we're only human and that's to be expected however you don't want to keep being heartbroken you don't want to catch no disease from him you don't want to catch no disrespect from him you don't want the next bitch talking about oh that's my baby daddy or that's my man and come knocking on your motherfucking door talking about bitch i came here because that's my motherfucking man all that drama that's that's extra, you don't motherfucking need it, okay? Honestly, you are a pretty girl, and like I said, if I went that way, I'd be all up in your DM, like, what's up, boo? What's up, okay? Um, I know I'm a little bit older, but I trust and believe me, a bitch will take care of you. That's just me as a general, you know what I'm saying? So we need to stop worrying about these dudes who are so thugged out. And I know sometimes we get caught up in that world and it's hard for us, you know what I'm saying? But honestly, I'd rather take heartbreak than being fucking disrespected and catching a fucking venereal disease any motherfucking day. So let that nigga go ahead and be who the fuck he is with them scallywag bitches that's on Tinder giving him all type of di diseases. Let that dirty dick nigga go. Let that dirty dick nigga go. I'm just saying, he a dirty dick nigga. And eventually, sweetheart, you will get all over that shit and you'll be okay. It's called feelings. We all have them. And eventually, it takes us some time, but over time, we get over that shit and we build our self-confidence and we move the fuck on in life, okay? And that's what the fuck I did. Unfortunately, when I left my husband and got divorced, I was tired of men. And I'm going to tell y'all this. I was tired of men and I went to the other side. I had a girlfriend. 
I had a girlfriend for a minute. She lived in New York. So I had her for a while. She was my neighbor and we became really close. And we, that's my, that was my girl. Like when I say that was my girl, that was my motherfucking girl. And when I moved here, we FaceTimed. She loved me. I loved her. I missed her. But then she started acting really crazy and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm over that whole girl thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go back to the fucking other side again. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it really wasn't for me. But to each his own, you know what I'm saying? I was going through some shit. But that was that was there. This is now. You know what I'm saying? However, I love me some dick. I haven't had no dick in a minute, like a year and a half, but I'm good. I got a I got a toy and I got these motherfuckers. And I'd rather have a toy and these motherfuckers than have some any lame ass motherfucking dude fucking with me, talking shit to me and using me. Or or female. Same thing, you know what I'm saying? It is what the fuck it is. Okay, so we go through heartache. We all go through heartache, but that's because we're human and we will eventually get over it. Sometimes it takes us longer than others, but you have to realize this. At the end of the day, it's for your own good and it's a blessing because you don't need anybody like that in your life. And as long as you continuously allow him to do this to you and go come back and forth in your life, he's going to do this. So this needs to be the last motherfucking time. Honestly, I would have never took him back after he would have gave me a disease and cheated on me like that. No, ma'am. You need to keep your dirty dick somewhere the fuck else. This is my thing. I'm not a gold digger, but I'm. it's like this. Nigga, if you don't have your own shit, I'm not trying to fuck with you. I'm, I don't need your shit because I got my own shit. But I got my own shit, and I don't need you to have no shit trying to get my shit. You know what I'm saying? That was wrong was the last relationship I had. I had my own shit, but this nigga was trying to come and get my shit. Like, I don't really have much, but I'm not about to let you take the little bit that I do have. And if you got your own shit, great. Then we could build together. But if I got my own shit and you ain't got no shit, then nigga stay the fuck away and don't DM me, don't motherfucking call or text me. I'm just saying. So on that note, stay diva and divalicious. Leave your comments, ratings, and all that good stuff. And I will see you in a soon to come video. I love you guys and peace out.